Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. We're going to go over Ethereum today. We're going to look at derivatives of the 50-week moving average and the 100-week moving average, and we're going to compare those to Bitcoin. If you guys like this content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. We like to do things a little differently around here and not look at just your average TA stuff. We look more at data science and looking at macro-level trends. So this first chart just shows the price versus days since inception of Ethereum. So 10 to the 0 is 1, 10 to the 1 is 10, 10 to the 2 is 100, 10 to the 3 is 1,000. Now, many of you guys are familiar with moving averages, so if we just show the 50-week moving average, um, you can see it here. So we have price, the blue, and then the 50-week moving average. Now, the interesting thing about the 50-week moving average is if we differentiate it, we can see these changes in, in slope much more clearly. So let's differentiate it. And on the right axis, you can see we're taking the time derivative of the 50-week moving average divided by the price. Now, the reason why I divide by the price is so that we can easily compare it with other derivatives um, of, of even Ethereum at a longer time scale, but also other coins. So dividing by the price is a way to kind of normalize it so that we can compare, compare things much easier um, so that they're basically on the same scale. So if you're not familiar with the derivative, it more or less just is a, is a way to uh, plot the slope of, these, um, of this line. So when the 50-week moving average is increasing, then we are above 1. So you can see on this right axis here is what corresponds to this yellow line or orange line. And when it's above one, when it's above zero, then that means that the slope is going up. So it means that the 50-week moving average is increasing. So here, the 50-week moving average is increasing. So we're we're just above zero. You can see at one point we um, we um, we come down and touch zero, which correspond to right in here. But then we we quickly bounced off of it. Now these trends, I believe, are not really shown in a lot of other uh, typical TA videos. So I, I find them very interesting. Um, and you can see that we more or less stayed uh, pretty high up here um, for a very extended period of time. We were above one, and or above zero, and the 50-week moving average of Ethereum was just continuing to increase. We eventually came down, and once we went below zero is when the 50-week moving average started decreasing. And you can see that it's it's been below zero for a very long period of time, and it recently, just recently, went back above zero. So you can see the the concavity here. This 50-week moving average has started increasing again. Now, what does this mean? Um, clearly, that the past does not represent the future, um, but it doesn't mean we can't look to see what things have happened to look at what has happened in the past to see what might occur and to get an idea of how market sentiment can change over very long periods of time. So let's look at comparing that with Bitcoin. So if we look at the time derivative of the 50-week moving average times the inverse of price, days since inception, so we're normalizing it for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Here's Bitcoin. You can see it goes... Um, let me move this over here so we can look at this axis. So you can see when Bitcoin, when it goes below zero, the 50-week moving average is decreasing. When it goes above zero, it's increasing. And so far, every time it, you know, it goes back above zero, it has been indicative of the next bull market. Now, is that going to be true this time? I don't know. Um, but you can see that here, you know, this was the the first very large bull run back in, um, you know, like many, many, many years ago. Um, I mean, only about a couple years after, I mean, this would have been um, like 20, uh, 2011 or so, would have been very early on. You can see this one over here is, um, or sorry, this is not, this is, uh, yes, this would be like 2011 or 2010, something like that. Um, this over here is the bear market following the 2013 peak, and then this over here would be the bear market following the 2017 peak. So you can see, though, when Bitcoin gets above zero, the 50-week moving average, um, uh, or the, the der time derivative of it, it stays above it, and it, it doesn't go below it until after um, 
you know, a very large run up in the price. Because you can see once it got above zero here, it stayed above zero for a number of years. And then it, when it went below zero, it stayed below zero for about a year, which means the slope, the 50 week moving average was going down. And again, once it really got above zero, except for this little, you know, fate, you know, the spike here, and it, I mean, it ended up going and, and staying above zero. But the point is, is when it's above zero, the 50 week moving average is increasing. And if the 50 week moving average is increasing, then the price is generally increasing over a long period of time. And here you can see, you know, this was true for about about a thousand days, so about three years. Um, the 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 price was generally increasing, so that that fifty week moving average was monotonically increasing as well. It never it never decreased in that in that period of time. Now the the slope at which it changed um, varied, uh, but it still was increasing the entire time. And the interesting thing here is with Ethereum, you know, we saw something similar, so we came down and then we popped back up, just like Bitcoin does, in that time derivative of the 50 week moving average, and now we've recently popped above zero. So if we were to continue to emulate what Bitcoin has done, which no telling if we will, but this could just be the very beginning of a very macro level trend. Um, so I know, I know the price right now isn't necessarily doing what you might want it to do, but in terms of the macro, um, the macro view, we are um, entering a, a phase where the, the 50 week moving average is, is starting to, to increase, which is more indicative of macro level trends. Clearly, I'm not saying we can't pop back below zero, I'm just noting that whenever Bitcoin got above zero, it stayed above zero for an extended period of time. If we plot the 100 week moving average, you can see that for Ethereum, it has been increasing for most of it for most of its existence and it recently started decreasing. And that's because the 100 week moving average is taking into account 700 days of data. Um, and now we're, you know, we're, we're basically getting, you know, about 700 days out. So those those prices over here are starting to not count anymore towards that moving average. And which is why it's starting to decrease. Now, if we compare it with Bitcoin, so this would be the, the time derivative of the 100 week moving average times the inverse of price. You can see that Bitcoin has also seen something similar. So it, you know, it came down, popped back up, and then fell down below it. Ethereum came down, popped back up, and then fell all the way down. And the question is, is how long is it going to take for us to get above zero. Now, price can start going up. I mean, price could go to, I mean, if it, let's just suppose the price of Ethereum went to $1,000 tomorrow. It's not. But if it did, this would still be below zero because it's taking into account, you know, 700 days of data. So the point is, is to look at these macro level trends and to, and, and to really um, uh, try to compare with, with Bitcoin and you know some of these coins that have been around a lot longer, you can see that if, that Bitcoin is is also looks to be repeating potentially a similar pattern that is that it has repeated in the past. Um, I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you guys like this content, and check out my Twitter, Telegram, and Discord channels. Uh, we're trying to grow those to to build communities where we can you know discuss different coins, and and we're not at each other's throats over which coins that we might have, but we're just there to keep a level head on, on coins that um, uh, we're, you know, potentially invested in or looking into and just looking to have, um, you know, level-headed discussions about that. Um, so I think that's it for this video. If you guys like it, please like the video, um, and I will see you next time. Bye.